All right, welcome back to Prestige Motorsports. Today we're going to talk about some marine combinations and what makes our marine engines different. And just to point out that we do a ton of different marine applications out there. Jet boats, air boats, offshore power boats, double, triple, four engine air boats, a ton. So I hope that you guys will watch this entire video because there is an absolute ton of good information if you're in the market for a marine engine. Okay, to start with this package, this is an OEM GM block, it's a 4 bolt main, and this one happens to be a 396 cubic inch. Now we offer a 408, but the reason we chose the 396 for this application is for two reasons. Um, one, the 396, it's a 3.875 stroke, and they offer that with a single piece rear main seal, which in a 408 is a 4 inch stroke, they do not. So there's a lot less chance of having a rear seal leak with a single piece over a two piece. Secondary to that, the customer a lot of times may have a flywheel and a drive coupler that's already set up for a single piece seal. So this being a 396 really fit the bill for this guy because he did have the flywheel, the drive coupler already. And just think, we'll get into the, the oil control of these motors and, and the importance of that. But when you're in a boat application, whether it's offshore power boat, pleasure boat, you're beating over waves, the oil in the oil pan is just going everywhere. So you're going to get some windage and that causes sometimes seal leaks. Okay, so since we covered the, the rear seal and the 396 cubic inch, give, I'm going to stop at each individual area that makes our engines a marinized engine. So, Getting a little bit further than the block, we'll start at the oil pan. So this one has a more traditional Moroso pan. It's actually a drag race pan. The reason that this one was chosen is because it's got internal baffling and windage trays in it. Um, and it's a, a specifically a rear sump. The application this go, is going into, we have a hull design that won't allow us to have what we call a three-quarter sump. So a three-quarter sump would give us more oil capacity and we have developed pans with more oil control. So this one just happens to be a drag race pan for this application. Um, we spend some time in the oil pump area, so we, we do kind of some of our own procedures to the oil pump. The whole idea with oil control is to keep the oil around the pickups so we don't have oil pressure fluctuation and bearing failures. Okay, so before we talk about uh, some options as we move up, um, one of the things I will point out in the oil pan, you'll see in, in previous videos that we've developed a 10 quart system for our big blocks. Um, just to concentrate on capacity a little bit, what we've learned is oil temperature is really critical. So there's a lot of chances that a guy's not running an oil cooler. So the more capacity we can get in the pan on the front side, the better. Uh, that's going to keep our oil temperatures down. There's a better chance we're going to keep that oil around the sump, as I mentioned. And um, when we get into the options, uh, we'll talk about spring oilers. That's a separator plate or a custom valve cover that uh, basically showers the valve springs with oil. And we do a modification to the block to squirt oil on the bottom of the piston. And when you do that, you're creating internal oil leaks, basically. It's, it's flowing a lot more oil to the top. We're flowing a lot more oil to the bottom of the piston. And therefore, we're going to deplete the amount that's in the sump. So uh, the, the importance on the oil pan just cannot be overlooked. All right, so now we've talked about the oil uh, capacity and control. Um, moving up, we, all of our marine stuff is going to be a forged crank. So we do a forged crank, H-beam rods, and forged pistons. The forged piston de design will change a bit depending on the engine application. Um, but one of the things, as I mentioned before, we offer an option for piston cooling jets. Not only does that keep the crown of the piston cool, but it keeps you out of detonation, for the airboat community, it's a possibility to keep it from running on because the piston is not retaining as much temperature during shutdown. 
Uh, and it also helps as lubrication for the piston pin. So the, it's a very good viable option. At this point, I'm gonna say it's, it's right around $500, and honestly, it's about the best money spent uh, on, on a new engine application. All right, so you'll notice, and this goes for all of our engine packages, typically gonna be a really nice uh, cast aluminum timing cover, but all of the marine stuff is gonna have a billet viscous clutch balancer or harmonic dampener. And the reason for that is, is they won't rust. They're also lightweight, so um, there's a lot of cool features to those uh, harmonic dampeners. Uh, we don't really need to get into all that today. Um, obviously, billet timing set, we, we really, really choose a good double roller timing set in these. And then we move up to the camshaft. Everything is going to be a hydraulic roller, uh, typically in a, a standard marine application. And we'll get into, uh, you know, of course, solid rollers, all kinds of different options there. Then we get to the cylinder heads. This is an area people talk a lot about. You know, they're worried about an aluminum cylinder head in a marine environment, especially with open loop cooling systems. So you're taking lake water, running it through the entire engine, and then spitting it out the back. Well, the problem with that is, is you have brackish water, you have salt water, and people worry about the cylinder heads eroding. So we've seen the erosion in iron heads anyway. The material makeup and quality of the material is very, very important. So we'll touch on that a little bit. Okay, so talking about the material makeup of the cylinder head, one of the things about our cylinder heads, they're all permanent mold castings and they're made out of very, very high-end aluminum material. So what does that really mean? Well, what it means is, is the head is a whole lot denser than a sand casting. Now, don't get me wrong, we're, we're looking at a, a small block here. We've got lots of big block packages that do use a sand casting cylinder head, but any time we can, we're going to use a permanent mold casting. Uh, that kind of covers some of the erosion things I was talking about. Secondary to that, there is an option for closed loop cooling, and you see a lot more of that today because of the LS engine packages. Um, the aluminum block, then aluminum cylinder heads, aluminum exhaust manifolds. We have to combat that corrosion somehow. So the closed loop cooling is one good uh, way to not even worry about it at all. That being said, we do encourage, if it is an open loop cooling system, is just to flush the system when you're completed with the, the engine out in the, the boat, enjoying your afternoon or weekend. So. Uh, that, that's just the part of the material makeup. So we'll dig a little deeper into the valve train now. So very much the same importance in the valve train as in the oil pan and oil capacity area and oil control. Cylinder head is an area or valve train is an area that a lot of people don't focus on. So automatically it's going to have extreme duty intake valves and Inconel exhaust valves. For those of you that don't know the Inconel exhaust valve and why it's used, I'll explain that a little bit. So basically, if you've ever looked out the back of most marine combinations, you see the exhaust coming out the hull and you see a bunch of steam and vapor coming out of there. Well, that's because we've got water flowing through the manifold coming out the tailpipe. Problem is, even with camshaft designs that have a, a small amount of overlap, you still have this steam inside the, the exhaust. That will find its way back to that hot valve. The other part that I don't think a lot of people think about is we power down and this aluminum casting is going to condensate. That condensation is going to roll down into that valve area and it's going to sit on that tulip. Well, if the valve is hot, eventually the tulip st starts to crack. That's what the Inconel exhaust valve combats. So we talked about, obviously, the, the importance of the valve. The valve spring is also very important. So you got to use a high-quality valve spring and retainer. And then we roll into the rocker arms. All of our marine stuff is going to use a billet aluminum-style rocker, unless we get into some Jessel stuff. Uh, but typically, it's going to be what they call an endurance rocker. The endurance rocker is a lighter body design than what their race rocker is. And some people might think, well, why would I go with something that's a little lighter weight? Well, the idea is we can have less spring pressure when we have a little bit lighter valve train components, whether that be push rods, springs, and that sort of thing. And what that does is 
really with less spring pressure, we create less heat in that spring, so it takes a lot longer for it to fatigue. The other thing is, is basically with the rocker arm being lighter, we don't have the, the uh, inertia factor of a heavier uh, rocker arm that's going to loft a valve open or something of that nature. So that kind of covers the valve train and the top end and, and valve cover portion. Um, or sorry, valve train portion. Moving into the valve covers, we'll talk a bit about that. So the valve covers, there's not a whole lot going on here. And this particular one, you see it doesn't have the spring oiler plate in here. That is an upgradable option that I mentioned before, a very viable option. Now that's something you can add later on down the road. It really depends on how you run your stuff. I mean, if you're constantly like I am, I'm to the wood the whole freaking way for an hour straight. If I can run 100 miles an hour, I'm going to. Well. I'd put spring oilers on this. Um, but we take a pretty basic cast aluminum valve cover. We fixture it to put a hole in it on a 45, roughly. And we have these straight up towers for these breathers. Underneath that tower is a really uh, well-designed baffle. Um, why that's important is when most small block Chevy valve covers, uh, they, they, the basically your breather is leaned off to the side. It's actually with the same plane as the valve cover is. And there's nothing really wrong with that, but they're not baffled very well either. So what happens when you're wide open, there's a lot of oil slinging around, especially if we got oil squirters in there, we've just got this excess amount of oil upstairs, it's going to want to come running out the breather. Now in this application, you don't have to worry about oil dripping on the hot header and lighting a fire, but you do in the airboat world. So the breathers, we spent some time, and then we've got an oil fill cap on either side, so you can choose whichever side you want to fill it from. All right, so just to recap this combination, we talked a lot about the marine or marinized uh, differences that we put into our combinations, but this being a 396, all forged, really good oil control system, uh, moving up to the top, in canal valves, extreme duty uh, intake valves, uh, the viscous balancer, all aluminum. Uh, and then now what we want to do is just kind of dive into the fuel injection part of it and what makes us different, what do we do for you as the customer. All right, so moving on to the fuel injection, no mystery, we chose Holly. Uh, love the stuff, got nothing but good things to say. But when we talk about fuel injection, we talk about multi-point fuel injection. And we'll dig into that a whole lot more in coming videos. But this one, what it is, it's featuring a Holley manifold, Holley's fuel rails, Holley's injectors, and then Holley's throttle body. We use their ignition system, so it's a dual sync distributor. Basically, we can sequentially fire each injector in firing order. That allows us the ability to time and control, uh, the, time and control the engine. And so then it kind of rolls into the, the manifolds and exhaust. Now we've talked a lot about the marine stuff. I want to point out we're a dealer for some of your top people, basically hardened marine, CP. Uh, they offer front drive accessories. This one didn't get that, but we offer the whole front drive accessory system. Manifolds or headers, tailpipes, exhaust. We do drive couplers. We're a dealer for uh, what is called basically the drive guardian. Uh, we also do outdrive systems. We also do installs. So we go far and above and beyond just the motor combination. So the importance of the EFI world in, in marine, and this is just our opinion and our approach, but it's very hard to take an engine that was carbureted and basically convert it to EFI. And I think what I'm about to tell you will make a lot of sense why I say that. So when you purchase a marine application from us that's going to be using exhaust manifolds and tailpipes, we encourage you to either send them to us or we purchase new ones for you. The reason is, is we'll baseline this motor with all of our equipment on the dyno. Then we're going to plug these on there. We're going to run water in the bottom and the water usually will cross over into your tailpipe. We don't do that in our, our room at this point because it's not designed to run water out the exhaust yet, but we do run it up and then we actually come out the back of the, the aluminum manifold. So this basically doesn't distort the manifold. We can get our tailpipe on there and we're getting a legitimate tune-up with the exhaust and the equipment that this engine's gonna use. 
The important reason for that is we can put an oxygen sensor in here. So you'll see there's a riser plate between uh, the tailpipe and the manifold. This is for our oxygen sensor location. So by putting the oxygen sensor in this location, we're going to get it dialed in a really good tune-up. We're going to transfer the learning. We're going to map it with fuel timing and get it really, really close to the way it's going to be in the vessel. The important reason for this, we talked about the manifolds condensating or a little bit of water vapor coming back up the exhaust. The oxygen sensor does not like that. So what happens when this condensates, it, it drops down in the manifold. When we key on, that sensor's heated. It heats as quickly as it can to 600 degrees. When you pop this motor off, you're going to pop that water vapor or condensation back over the sensor. Good chance you're going to ruin the sensor. So by doing all of the pre-dyno work and mapping, when the, when the customer gets it, when they're ready to do the first startup, we're going to remotely access their ECU and we're going to initiate the first startup with them. We're going to see how it does in the boat. If it's basically lake worthy at that point, we're going to tell them to make a run, run it as you normally would, and come back. At that point, we'll log back into the ECU and smooth the things up. So the point of this is, is we've dialed in a really good tune-up on our engine dyno, then what we do for the customer after the sale, when this thing is lake worthy, ready to pop off, they're gonna call us. We're gonna assist with your first startup. We're gonna make any small tweaks or changes. If it is lake worthy, go out and run it. Go run it as you normally would and come back. At that point, we are going to look at the mapping. We're gonna basically smooth it out and at, if, if it's ready at that point, we're gonna close up the parameters of oxygen sensor compensation limits and the learn parameters. And the reason for that is, is we can either leave the oxygen sensor in and take our chances as far as how long the sensor will last and if it fails, the system's not gonna dump a bunch of fuel at it. Uh, the reason is when the sensor fails, it usually fails lean. So other option is we take this plate out get rid of the O2 sensor, and we shut the oxygen sensor off completely and run the motor in open loop, which is what you typically find with uh, Mercury Marine applications. So to just wrap this up, obviously we do a ton of different marine applications, and one of the things that I didn't touch on, which is about everything we talked about, is we're one of probably the only or few companies that will put a warranty on a marine application. So you want something that's dialed in right the first time, give us a call.